children. Hello. Um, I probably should have done a sound test before I did this, but oh well. Um, I know it's been a while since I've posted a podcast or anything. Um, it's been crazy, to say the least. Um, so, um, let's see. Let's let me give you a little quick update about what's been going on. Uh, work, 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 work. So. I've been working a lot lately. That's been the big thing, of course. That's what always been slowing me down. And been going to Tin River a lot, but not enough that it's you not know, been out there long enough to film. So I've been up there with uh, new people and really didn't want to deal with vlogging and showing them Tin River. Uh, so that's part of the reason why I haven't vlogged. I do have a vlog that of recent footage um, that I haven't posted yet. In fact, I've got going out to um, DuPont National Forest. I still have that vlog to post for you. And I think I've got at least one other. I'm not sure. I'm sure I do. And if you hear any rustling in the background, um, yeah, I just got a shipment in from Walmart.com and it came in a gigantic box for some reason. And in the box was a bunch of that non-popping bubble wrap and a bunch of that black, or brown paper, the filler paper. My cats are now having way too much fun playing with the filler paper sitting on my floor. So, yeah, if you hear any rustling and stuff, that would be that sound. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, now hopefully since I hit pause and I didn't hit stop, that hopefully the, the quality is the same. Who knows? Uh, like I said, I've got those vlogs to, or vlog to post for you. And I have some little free time now. So, I'm like, okay, time to record some podcasts and get this, you know, thing cranking. One thing I forgot that I was planning on doing at the end of the podcast was doing a scripture or something like that. Uh, thankfully, Anita Renfro, an amazing comedian lady, um, she came out with one of those cool desk flip calendars that doesn't have the days of the week on it, so it is good every time. You know, it's, it will never be out of date. So... I figured I'm going to flip it to today's date, and heck, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it at the beginning instead of at the end, because if I do it at the end, I may forget it. Um, I may also do it, because this one is going to be a nice short one, hopefully. Who knows, we're already at the three-minute mark. Um, do a, just pick a random, would you rather card, and answer all five questions. So, that'll be fun. Um, if, again, I've been watching a lot of British and Irish stuff, so if the accent appears like it is now, don't be alarmed. It's just normal. Um, I've been obsessed with the Gleason family right now. Oh my god, they're so cool. Um, and actually, I think the next podcast I'm going to do is actually going to be on charities. Uh, so listen to the next podcast. Who knows when that will come out whenever I get them done editing. So yeah, I'm going to talk about a couple of different things charities that, or at least one charity that the Gleason family is being involved with, and a few others uh, with NASCAR. So that'll be the next podcast, which I just pulled out of my butt just now. That's awesome. <laughs> and who knows, I might just flip to another random day on this lovely calendar since who knows when I'll be posting these. In fact, I might just do a couple because who knows when I'm going to post these. So, um... I'm recording this on August 20th, so August 20th is a cute little quote. Um, it says, if you want to feel good about your whole day, go into your closet, find your swimsuit, and put it on. Walk into your bathroom and look in the mirror. Nothing worse is going to happen to you all day. So, I need a run for her. You just got to love her. She, she she has some really good stuff. And if you don't know who I need a run pro is, uh, go look her up. I'll try to put a link for her below. Um... If you, you may have heard, she's the one who did the mom sense video, which is the, all the random phrases that mothers say to the tune of, um, William Tell Overture. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love her. I've gotten to see her two times in person now, two, three, maybe. She's, she's amazing. Anyway, so on to today's, uh, topic? I mean, it's a topic, but uh, th th there, there's a word missing that I can't quite put my finger on. It, it's one of those not exactly touchy subjects, but it is um, 
Hot Topic? No, wait, that's a cool store. Um, anyway, you guys can figure it out from here. Um, I, I, I call this what, you know, when to speak up and when to keep quiet. Uh, and that can be applied to so many things. Uh, the main topic I'm hitting on is, you know, when you know somebody's in trouble, uh, is having, going through a difficult time or something like that, when you need to tell somebody, you know, of legal or higher up, and, you know, when you know they're just blowing steam and they'll be fine tomorrow. And I'm probably going to get in trouble for this one, but... And really, this is not aimed to one specific incident or one specific person, because I'm sure there's somebody or some several somebodies who might think, oh, they're talking about me. Um, or, oh, you're the one who ratted me out. And like I say, people, I am happily a rat. I, um, I don't hold back. When there's something that is immoral or illegal or against our company policy, and you're blowing it off, yeah. I'm going to report you. Sorry. <laughs> Gee, I have scruples. What can I say? Um, but I've had several friends over the course of time. <laughs> I know, right? Several friends. More than one. That That's amazing right there. Who have gone through issues, whether it's financial, spiritual, mental, physical, um, and they hit that point, and I have too, uh, you hit that point where you're just like, well, F this. Just, just, it's done with. Or you just hit that frustration level and it's like, man, so-and-so's got it coming. Um, or next time so-and-so says, blah, I'm going to fill in your own blanks there. I'm sure you've all said it at least once. Said it, you know, straight out or you've thought it at least. But the the fun part is you got to make that decision, and you got to understand when your friends have to make the decision, or a friend, coworker, random stranger who overheard you. You got to understand that sometimes when you say things that are questionable or negative or um, alarming, that anybody who hears it and knows how to contact um, anybody. <laughs> It's going to come across that they're going to notify somebody um, if you're threatening to hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. And actually had to do this. There's these cool um, little teachings that they do for us at work on our computer. And this is actually one of the big things they taught us is, you know, you got to learn the, you know, the problem associated from the associate with a problem. And you got to learn the difference between the two. And that's kind of what I want to talk about here as well. Um, when to kind of learn when it's just this guy who's got a problem and it'll eventually go away and just, you know, let, you know, sleeping dogs lie. And when there's a problem person in your life or at your work or on the street and when you've got to notify the authorities. Because I've had friends who have said, you know, so-and-so is lucky that, I don't just go get a gun and shoot shoot them or shoot all their friends or shoot everybody in this area. Uh, it's terrifying. And, and to me, that, that phrase scares me because I am part of the Columbine generation. I, you know, was in school when it happened. No, I was in Colorado. But that happened while I was in middle school. And because of that, those kids in Columbine... I was also targeted as one of the quiet kids who potentially would shoot up a school. And thank God I was raised a lot better, um, or else I might have been one of those kids who would have shot up the school. I mean, I spent a day in the principal's office because they were afraid. Because I had marked out some faces in your book, just like the Combine kids. I was one of the quiet ones, just like the Combine kids. So, to me, like, anybody who even hints at shooting other people, it scares me. Because um, you just never know when it's an idle threat and when they're going to actually do it tomorrow. In fact, I was um, watching one of those top creepiest videos, or top creepiest pictures, 
and one of the pictures was the class photo of the Columbine class. And up in the top corner, you can actually see a group of kids looking like they're shooting guns at the camera. Two of those, like six kids, were the two who shot the school just weeks later. So again, you, you have to know when they're joking, when they're just running their mouth, and when they're being serious. And of course, you know, I'm not a psychological, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know what, you know, the best ideas are, you know, how to pinpoint which one's which, but I just kind of want to, you know, give you guys an idea of some of the things I've heard and, you know, be alert when you're talking to people or when you hear other conversations happening. I mean, like, and there's an awesome show that is, um, What Would You Do? And they've had so many different types of scenarios. And that's a good show to watch and to kind of think, what would you do? And that's kind of what I'm kind of getting at on, in this podcast is, what would you do if your friend said some of the following stuff? Or you overhear somebody at a restaurant or at the grocery store or hear a coworker say these kind of things. Um, I've had people talk about, you know, ever since, I got that email from, you know, this guy I like. I've thought about killing myself because, you know, he was just number 20 of people who never seemed to like me. And, yeah, I've thought about killing myself. So, thank God that, you know, you just kind of take those moments and you're just like, shit, <laughs> you really did think about that for a while there, didn't you? And you start to realize that that person may have been having a bad week and hasn't said anything to you and all of a sudden they tell you this and it's like, oh, okay. Well, that's awkward. Um, or, you know, if your friend just says, oh my God, so-and-so is driving me crazy. I'm just going to kill him. You know, if, if they say that a lot, you might want to worry. If they just say it here and there, chances are they're not going to actually hurt the person. Um, and not so much as even when you got to worry about when they are threatening other people as much as they're threatening themselves, too. Um, the, the, b both situations you really got to take into consideration. And, you know, when you hear, like, a couple fighting, and if he even dares say the words, when I get you home, blah, 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 man, step in right then and there. Call 911 while you kick in his ass. Um Okay, it really, it, it, I think so many people, and I I see this a lot at work, and I've seen it in many places that I've worked in, and I've seen it even in churches, where, well, I don't want to get him in trouble, or I'm afraid to say something because it might make them worse. Yeah, but not saying anything will make that person worse because they're not going to be able to get the help that they need. Um, and like I said, I'll admit, I've said... And, and thought some really bad things. And I have not gotten professional help, but I've talked to friends who have talked me down, um, you know, down off the verbal ledge at least. Um, and it gets scary when you're in that mental place. And really, like I said, too, sometimes, you know, if your friend's saying these kind of things, just talk to them. Just ask them what the situation is, what they're going through. Um, the rational people will eventually calm down and, and even maybe even apologize to the per people or the person that they threatened. Um, if they are to the point where they're irrational, where they're, you're going, well, dude, I I'm sure what so-and-so said was not meant to offend you. Yeah, but th they should have said it, blah, blah. When they're getting defensive, don't even try. Just stop talking to them. They're irrational. It's over that's when you go to, you know, higher authorities, whether it's one of their family members, depending on how you know them. Um, you know, whether you go to a family member or go to your boss, or if they're a random stranger that you heard, you know, threatening their spouse, or whatever. Wherever they're at, wherever you and this person are at, find a boss or manager in that area, or really, if need be, call 911. Call the police or your local police if you got their number. Because um, really, a lot of times, they said, you know, when people are making threats, 
They said that they tend to act upon it within 24 hours to a week. Um, and this, this, in some cases, it may be months before they act on it because they're probably just getting the nerve to do it. But they will eventually do it. So anytime you hear somebody make an idle threat, kind of gauge if you know the person. Or if you don't, you know, ask the people who might know that person. You know, get an idea of how serious they're being. Because you really never know if you stepping up could save somebody else's life whether it's that person's life or the person they're threatening's life. I mean, it, it, it's been scary, and there's been a lot, and I know right now the world is fallen, and there's a lot of stupid shit going on. Um, but I've had some friends recently who've been going through some shitty stuff, and they have said some things have scared me. I'm like, do, 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 no, 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 no. We're not having that discussion. You're not saying that right now. And for the most part, I've been able to call them down and talk to them or, you know, get somebody else involved to talk to them or me and another person who have, you know, gotten with this person. Um, and there have been a few that I've had to go to the next step and contact somebody in authority and say, hey, this person is a little sketchy. Um I don't know if what they're saying is serious or if it's, you know, just blowing off steam, but somebody should really talk to this person because um, obviously I can't get through to them. Nothing I've been saying has gotten through to them, so it's time for somebody else to step in. And even if, like, some people, they just need a hug or pat on the back or, you know, even... If you've got one of those suicide hotlines or if you've got a number to a psychiatrist or something, even if you don't blatantly say, dude, I know you got a problem here, call the psychiatrist, like slip the number into a book and loan it to them or <laughs> slip the number into their locker if you know them at work or something like that or just, just something to be subtle. Don't make a big deal out of it because sometimes we're dealing with people who – are on the edge, on the ledge, talking to them it sometimes just makes them more defensive. Or it's like it escalates the problem. Sometimes like those people who they're borderline depressed and you say, dude, I think you have a problem, that, that pushes the over into full-blown depression. It's like, oh, you think I have a problem? I'm a horrible person, blah, 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 blah. Oh, shit. You know, so th that's... Some of the things you guys have considered, and this is going to be kind of a short one. We're not even at the 20-minute mark, and um, it was just one of the things I really kind of got to get off my chest. <laughs> it, it, it's, it has been an issue, um, like I said, amongst my friends and co-workers, and heck, in the past, it's been an issue with my family. We've had, we dealt with that with myself, my grandmother, and my father. So, you know, j just things to think about, and, you know, keep your ears open and your heart and mind open to things you um, you overhear. Uh, so yeah, that that's. I, I'm sure there could be more to be said, but I, uh, I really don't. Without saying details and saying specific things, it's hard to really get the full message. But you guys can get the gist, you know, gist of it. Ooh, I almost said the wrong word. Um. But yeah, it, it, just keep an open mind and keep an open ear. And, you know, gauge attitude versus, you know, body language and tone of voice and severity. I mean, really, if you, you kind of see that they're ready to jump at this, you know, threat, you might want to call somebody right then and there. If it's one of those things where they're just sitting there and they're rambling, it, you know, they're talking about the weather, talking about the family, and then they talk about how much they hate their job and how much they wish they just kill themselves so they can get the money for it. You know, their family can get the money. You might want to, you know, either talk to them or talk to their family or, you know, talk to someone who's a little closer to them friend-wise. Um, but, yeah, just gauge the situation, engage the person. You never know. You, you might just be... Um, 
there's so many songs out there, How to Save a Life, or, God, I don't remember the name of that song, uh, you know, saw the guy after the concert, and so, I mean, like, you know, you may be the person, and don't do it for the glory, you know, oh, my name with the headlines, I saved this man from jumping up a bridge, no, don't do it for that, do it just so you know that you saved somebody, so yeah, um, let's crank up this to a nice lighter note. Um, okay, I have 31 Zumundu Would You Rather cards. Um, here in just a second, I'm going to say now, and whatever the, um, second stamp is on the audio here, it is the number card that which I will, um, read. So, I'm going to close my eyes, and you guys can just have trust me. All right, that was oh god, was right between 15 and 16, almost exactly. So I'm gonna pick cards 15 and 16 since it was almost smack between the two. And hell, I might re- might just read them both. So all right, this first card here. Um, and just a reminder, the would you rather cards are category categorized in pain, fear, and discomfort, appearance, and embarrassment. Food and indigestion, ethics and intellects, or just random. So, I will read the first card here. For the pain, fear, and discomfort, try, would you rather try to kill three wild snakes while armed with only a bowling ball, or sit still while thousands of honeybees form a beard on your face? Um... You know, I'm going to go with the honeybee beard, because I've actually seen a lot of people doing that, and most of them don't, re- you know, result in someone's death, but trying to kill rattlesnakes with a bowling ball sounds really, 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 really stupid, so, yeah, and if I get stung by the bee, at least that's an easy thing to, you know, take care of, you get bit by a rattlesnake, you're done, Duh. all right, in appearance and embarrassment, Show up on some public access cable channel fighting with your spouse about your sexual problems. Wow. Or show up on the same channel sitting on the toilet singing about a stupid song. Wow. Both of them are bad, but I'm going to go with fighting with my spouse about sexual problems. Because we know Jerry Springer shows made up anyway. And most reality shows are fake. So I'd rather do that and know that it will at least get help about her sexual problem, then, yeah, no, no one's seeing me on a toilet, and no one's hearing me sing, okay, in a story. Um, would you rather eat a raw goldfish and chew it, ooh, or lick the bottoms of an athlete's feet? Oh, my God, they're both disgusting. Um, now, they didn't say lick an athlete's feet, after they ran or anything, so I'm going to go with that one, because most of them do a lot of stuff to keep their feet, you know, healthy and and stuff, so we didn't say it was before an event, or before after an event, it just says, so yeah, I'm going to go with that, because, oh, no, I don't want a goldfish anywhere near my mouth, um, yeah, I kind of just said I want feet near my mouth, on to the next subject, would you rather write a novel that sells moderately well but is remembered for centuries to come or that sells tremendously but is ridiculed? Easy. Um, I remember for centuries to come. Because um, really, it sells moderately at maybe at first, but eventually, I mean, people are going to still be buying it forever and ever. And I'd rather be remembered than ridiculed. Ugh, no. Uh, right, and would you rather random try to sneak into a movie once a month or during baseball season try to sneak into a game twice a month? Oh, that one's easy because I really hate sports, so I would totally try to sneak into a movie at least once a month. Heck, if I knew how to do that, I probably wouldn't because I got friends who work at the theater and I ain't going to do that. All right, since we have a little bit of time... I'll go ahead and do the second card. So, yay! Would you rather 
always wear shoes a half size too small, or always have your underwear creep up your butt. <laughs> um, considering there are people out there who wear thongs, um, yeah, I'd rather have it creep up my butt than my shoes be half size too small because, you know, I work on my feet and, no, uncomfortable shoes is the devil. Having your underwear up your butt's annoying, but it's, you know, moderately tolerable. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to go with <laughs> creeping up my butt. <laughs> Gross, but it helps. I mean, it not as bad as the other one. That Why did I say it helps? Lord, I promise I'm not drunk, kids. All right, would you rather be left completely naked with no possession, with no possessions in a foreign country or in your place of work? Oh, foreign country, hands down. Well, they will be down covering up myself, but at least in a foreign country, nobody knows me. Again, depends on the foreign country. If it's in Ireland, they'll think I'm one of theirs and they'll take me in. Um, a place of work, uh, no, no, uh, no. No. Considering where I work, there was already a fluffy chick who was naked. No. No, I'm good. Would you rather drink water forever as your only liquid or never again be able to use condiments, spices, gravies, or sauces? That's just sad. Um, I'm going to go with drink water forever as your only liquid. Because um, never again having be able to use condiments or spices... No, no, I'm not that Irish. Ha 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 I don't do the bland. No, 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 no. Would you rather, after someone you know is con a convicted felon, tells everyone at a party that you're a loser, exposes this fact about him, or keep it to yourself? Oh, uh, wow, it's hard to really realize. Read this. After someone you know is convicted is a convicted felon, tells everyone at a party that you're a loser. Expose this fact about him or keep it to yourself. Depends on why they called me a loser. I mean, because me and my friends are like, hey, butt face, or hey, loser, what's up? Uh, if he calls me a loser saying, you know, that I'm the low life, like, yeah, well, at least I've been convicted of a felony. Um, but if, you know, they're doing it in jest or if, you know, I did something that was completely loser maneuver, then hell yeah, I'm going to keep it to myself. See, it depends on why he called me a loser. Ho, ho, ho. God, this next one's horrible. Would you rather live near a noisy international airport or the city dump? Um, yeah, international airport. Because at least I can get there fast if I need to actually get there. Um, and I can always have earplugs or get soundproof walls. But the city dump, ooh, ooh no. No. Airport, it totally freaking is. Um, so wow, I didn't think this was going to actually go this long. Coolio! Um, so there you have it, children. Um, you know, judge each situation uniquely, but just keep in mind, should I report this or not? Um, so now I'm going to, you know, save this thingy, and record another podcast, hopefully maybe several, who knows, but anyway, I will talk to you guys later, or possibly even see you on my vlog, who knows, I'm actually trying to get those things done, but I will uh, talk to you guys at a later date, love, peace, bye.